Hello and welcome to the session where we are introducing distribution functions. So distribution functions are one of the core areas of maths as we see here. It's commonly used in statistics, in engineering, finance, many other fields. And here are some of the core concepts that we need to make progress with distribution functions. So first off, just the notion that we have a population or some collection of elements of that population or population members. So the population, of course, by default, we think of human populations. So we can think of people in a crowd in some place, or we can think of droplets of water in a cloud. So in that case, the cloud is the population and the droplets are the members of the population. Or we can think of, or if we have a reactor and the particles in the reactor are of interest to us, then the particle is the member of the population and the particles in the reactor, that's the population itself. And among these populations, there are certain measurements that we are doing. There are certain properties that we are interested in. So for example, in the crowd of people, we might want to know what's the age of people that go to the space. So we might be interested in the ages of the people or if it's about the droplet in the cloud, we might want to know where is each droplet in that cloud. So even the position of a thing, the position of a member of the population, that can be another property. Or if it's the reactor and the particles in the reactor, then the size of each of those particles, that might be something of interest to us. Maybe that's something that affects the reaction rate or something like that. So we'll just define X to be the value of the property, knowing that the property can be any attribute of the member of the population. Then also we are wanting to summarize the distribution of these properties. So we know we have a population, we know we have members in that population, and we have properties of the members of the population. And we can say that there is some distribution of the properties among that population. So for example, if the property is the height of the people, then we know we get short people and tall people and medium-sized people. So we can imagine that there's some distribution function. There's some distribution, which we'll call f of x. So there's some distribution of the property x. Right, and you can see alongside, we've got a little drawing of an f of x. So the distribution concept is that you have a certain total amount of a property. So for example, uh, if you have a total amount of age, right, it's a bit strange, but if you take a group of people and you add up all the ages, then you can say there's a certain total age here. And we can talk about distributing that total age among the people. So if you have perhaps a, a total age of a, a thousand, then you can say, okay, I'm giving you an age of 50 and I'm giving you an age of 20. Or if you're maybe a video gamer you can, and you're given a, a total number of skill points, then you can say, okay, I'll put uh, 100 into intelligence, I'll put 50 into strength and so on. So you have a distribution function that tells you how a certain total amount is distributed among the members of the population, right? In the video game example, the members of that population are actually the, the attributes uh, of, of the character. So your members of a population can be any abstract thing, right? They can even be properties of a, uh, of a distribution of skill points, for example. And here's an example. So uh, in this case, we are taking the property to be the amount of firewood in each house in a certain district, right? So amount of firewood is our X. And we can imagine that there is a certain total amount of firewood in the whole district. So among all the houses, we can add up a certain total amount of firewood. And so maybe the distribution of firewood looks like this. So this is just to emphasize that the property doesn't have to be equally split among all the uh, members of the population. So uh, you could have houses with no firewood and some houses with a medium amount and some houses with a very large amount of firewood. 
So the height of this graph is not the uh, is is not the amount of firewood. This is the amount of houses, right? It or it relates to the amount of houses. So a high F value means that there's a high number uh, of that particular value of X. So X is the amount of firewood. So this middle amount here, this X uh, value around this region has the highest number of houses having that amount of firewood. So that gives us something about the flavor of a distribution function. So it's not the value of the property. The value of the property is actually on the independent axis. The thing we are trying to track is the amount of the population that has that property. So for example, if this was height, then you can say there are no people of height zero, uh, but as we look at greater heights, then you get more people of the greater heights. And then around the average, you'll have most people having the average height, right? By the definition of average. And then you'll get some very tall people as well, but there'll be a, a smaller number of very tall people. So that's something we have to bear in mind, uh, these variables, your Xs, um, that's how uh, large and small the property value is. And F is actually the number of, or, or it relates to the fraction of the population having that specific property. So that's a distribution function. And strictly speaking, to express that mathematically, we define our distribution function f of x, we define it implicitly such that the fraction, right? That's what we actually want. What fraction of the population has a property? So we define the distribution function such that the fraction is obtained by integrating the distribution function uh, between uh, two values. So we can say that the distribution function is defined implicitly. It's defined such that we get the fraction if we integrate under that distribution function. So uh, more strictly speaking, we define f of x, lowercase, such that we get the fraction uppercase f of the population exhibiting the property x in the range x1 to x2. So we pick two X values here, and then we integrate under that. And then that gives us the fraction between those two uh, property values, X1 and X2. So that's a distribution functions definition. And you may say, well, isn't this a very complicated way of, uh, of counting what should be a simple thing, right? Fractions are a fairly simple thing to understand. Now, why do we have to have these integrals here? And we'll see that there are many advantages to doing it this way. So for example, if you have a very large population, right? Let's say you have a population of perhaps uh, a trillion uh, droplets of water, and you want to know some property about that uh, population of droplets, then we don't want to go and count every single droplet and then say, well, this droplet is more than five microns. So yes, it applies or, or no, it doesn't. And, and so we don't want to look at every single droplet. Instead, we can summarize all that information in the distribution function. And if we want to know uh, how many oil droplets or water droplets are between five microns and 10 microns, then if we have this function, we can just do this integration and we're done. We have the answer we're looking for. No need count over a trillion uh, droplets. So that's one advantage, uh, what do we say here? Um, yeah, it, it also gives us a method for calculating any arbitrary combination of X1 and X2. So we don't have to pre-compute this. We don't have to pre-calculate all the possible fractions because I could calculate fractions between five and 10 today um, by counting over the trillions. And then I could also go and calculate between 20 and 30 and, uh, and then if somebody asks me for some other weird combination, like between 2.5 and 7.9, then I'd have to go and calculate uh, all that again or do the counts again. Whereas here, we always have this function f of x. It is possible to create an accumulation function, which makes it very, very easy to do such a count. And uh, there are many other advantages when we start combining it with the uh, 
concepts like moments of a distribution and finding means and standard deviations and so on. So it is extremely powerful to have it in this form. And there's just a little bit of a concept leap we need to make. We need to get rid of, uh, not get rid of, but uh, we need to get used to this idea of uh, X being down here as a property range and of F being related to the fraction of the property in that range. Um, yeah, so we've said this, we are not interested in uh, the amount allocated to a specific member, right? So. Um, in the houses example, we are not uh, asking uh, this particular house, how much firewood does it have, right? Instead, we want to know how many um, elements in our population have uh, the property in a specific range, right? So in this example here, right, going further with the firewood in the houses example, uh, we are asking, what's the fraction of houses that have collected between 50 kilograms and 100 kilograms of firewood. And so if we have this distribution function f of x, then we can calculate that uh, using the definition. So we've just introduced this here. This is how we get the fraction by integrating under the distribution function. And so here we are saying you can get uh, the, the fraction of houses having between 50 and 100 kilograms simply by substituting for x150 and for x200. And that means in our calculation, we have to integrate from 50 to 100 uh, over f of x. And so f of x, we introduced that as a kind of example distribution. And we just need to find 50 and find 100. Those are our two x values. And then just calculate the area under that curve in that region. So that's how we can read an integral. Right, it's simply uh, the area under the function f of x. So, for example, if we do this integration and uh, the area works out to be zero point one, then we can say the fraction of houses uh, that have collected between fifty and hundred kilograms is zero point one. So, ten percent of the houses have collected firewood in that um, mass range. Um, so. A couple of things to notice here. Uh, this tells us then that F itself is not the fraction, right? So when we want the fraction like 0 0.1 here, F is not that fraction, right? If we have to integrate under F to get that fraction, then F itself is not the fraction, right? Um, and we defined uh, uppercase F to be that fraction. So we use F, the distribution function, to get the fraction F itself the distribution function is not the fraction. The other thing we notice here is that we are defining all our fractions in specific ranges. So in this case, we defined uh, between x1 and x2. So we said 50 to 100. And so we are not uh, specifying one fixed number. So we are not saying what's the fraction of houses having 75 kilograms of wood, for example. Right, And that's because that is an extremely specific requirement to say, I want to know exactly uh, 75 kilograms of wood, how many houses have exactly 75 kilograms of wood, then that is a very hard question to answer. right? And in fact, the, uh, there's an example here. So what's the fraction of houses with exactly 100 kilograms of firewood? So when you think about this question, you realize it's too specific a question, right? That means we are not including houses with 100 kilograms plus one gram. You can't even be one gram off. So whether it's plus or minus, right? It can't be um, uh, anything than 100 kilograms. It can't even be one microgram off, right? It has to be 100 kilograms exactly. And so we realized the chance of finding a house or the number of houses having exactly 100 kilograms is uh, vanishingly small. So we say the probability of an exact value of the distribution um, is zero. Um, it's pointless looking for exactly 100 kilograms. And let's take another example that might be a bit more familiar to us. We could ask, what's the fraction of people in a classroom? Uh, so let's say it's at university. So 
uh, we know the age is uh, around 20. Maybe 20 would be even an average age in the classroom. So what's the fraction of people of age 20 years? And if you think of it, you would say, yeah, I, I can work that out. Um, if I look in my classroom, there are lots of people of age 20. So I can uh, I can count up those people and divide by the total number. And that's the fraction. But if you think further, we are looking for exactly 20 years. Right. Um, and in common language, uh, when we say we are 20 years old, we usually mean that we are between 20 and 21 years old. And even if it's your birthday, you mean that you were born at some time during those 24 hours. So that's not as exact as when you're working with uh, distributions, right? When we say we want to know uh, who's of age 20, then that means 20 and not 20 plus one second or not 20 minus one second how many people are of age exactly 20 years now and so that means in this instant 20 years ago a person would have had to be born and we would count them in that class and you see by the time you figure out who that is and even before you can count to that uh, or point to that person um the perhaps a second will have passed and the person is older than 20. So even if you could find, even if there was a person of exactly 20 when you started looking for it, in the instant that it takes you to uh, identify them, um, they won't be 20 years old anymore. So that's why we always talk in terms of ranges. We always deal with uh, between an X1 and an X2 right? Uh, the probability of finding something of exactly a certain property value is zero. So we'll go into further detail on distribution functions. We'll look at how to find values for them and or how to determine uh, the distribution function itself, uh, given a limited set of data. And uh, those will be in the next videos. Thanks for listening.